Do you want to make the Rolls Royce of litter boxes for your cat? Well, fantastic. That's what this video is going to help you do with very little effort or cost. I'll be running through what you'll need. I'll show you how to design and make the box and you'll learn what cats really look for in a litter box. Welcome to Cats with Matt. I'm Matt, a cat behaviorist, and I've been helping guardians for 25 years with their cat's behavior. And one of the most common issues I see are cats who are toileting in dodgy spots. And more often than not, this is because they aren't a fan of the litter trays provided by their people. Let's face it, litter trays are designed more for our preferences as humans, small, hooded, and inconspicuous, rather than what our cats really desire. Large, open, clean and airy. If you can get the tick of approval from your cat regarding the litter tray, often long-standing toileting misadventures can be sorted. And often overnight. Trust me, I'm speaking from experience, in case after case of cats choosing the wrong spots to toilet, providing them with a gold standard litter tray can be like a magic wand for toileting issues. I've got a whole video on what cats are looking for in a litter box, so check out this uh, video for more detail. But today's all about construction of a simple but highly desirable toileting space for your cat. And don't worry, I'm a cat behaviorist, not a DIY guru. If I can whip up one of these Rolls Royce boxes in half an hour, you can too. So first up, we've got the equipment that you'll need for this construction. I've got a permanent marker and a ruler to mark up the container so that we can keep keep the cuts nice and nice and straight and tidy. We've got some butane gas uh, to heat up the the tool you'll be using to make the cuts. Um, this attachment um, or an attachment like this you can get from nice hardware stores for cheap, maybe a, a kitchen shop um, for making creme brulee and, and those types of things. Um, here's the highly technical tool we'll be using for the cut, an old kitchen knife and some leather gloves uh, just because of course the knife is going to get warm or hot um, so that things are nice and safe and comfortable for you. And finally uh, a decent mask uh, because there'll be fumes and we want to look after your lungs. Later in the video I also use this multi-tool to make one of the cuts so if you've got one of these stay tuned for how that might work. And this is the type of container that I recommend you use. 65 centimeters long, that's 25 inches, 50 centimeters or 20, and 40 centimeters or 15 inches high. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is to mark out the hole you're gonna cut for the cats to enter the box. For the lip height, I've got 15 centimeters here or six inches, but if you've got older cats or cats with mobility issues, go a whole lot lower than that to help them into the box. The compromise there is there may be more litter scatter as they dig in the box and flick the litter about. Here's another look at the setup that I used to heat up the knife to make the cut. It's butane gas with this attachment. I made a few passes on the knife, wasn't sure exactly how many I needed to get it up nice and hot, um, but I probably heated it, heated it up for 30 seconds and then it made the cut nice and easily and then you just need to let the, the heat of the knife do the work and it will slide slide down that cut um, really pretty easily. With this container I use the indentation line here to make the cut uh, just to keep keep it looking as tidy as possible. With the hot knife the nice thing is is that coming around the corner with those curved cuts that really works pretty well compared to maybe something like a like a Dremel. The other benefit of using a hot knife is that the edges are nice and smooth, no burrs or other sharp bits for our cats. The other benefit is that uh, you don't need access to tools like a, a Dremel or a multi-tool or all that type of thing to, to get the cut done. But um, I've, I've got a multi-tool and so I thought I would do one of the cuts using one of these. Uh, this is a blade that just vibrates backwards and forwards rather than a Dremel with a cutting blade which would spin around in a, in a circular motion. 
Um, so the nice thing here is it's nice and nice and quick. But you see here, it, it was just a little bit harder. This is the first first cut I made, um, and it just started to head up on an angle with me. Um, the second cut, the angle that that I had on the blade, it seemed like I had far more control. So it's probably just a little bit of user error there. If you were able to practice in some way to get those cuts straight, it would be a, a very quick way to, to make the cuts needed. The only thing is, is it does leave the edge pretty rough and you, you'd want to smooth that off. Uh, I used a knife, a hot knife to, to do that, but you could use a, a, a Dremel or, or even sandpaper to, to get the edge nice and smooth. The, this is the edge with the, with the hot knife. Doesn't look that straight close up, but from a distance it looks tidy enough. My cat Snugs here, as soon as I put it down inside, jumped in to check out the new space. Always inquisitive. I topped it up with litter. So now that we've whipped up this box, I'd like to outline what the advantages are. And there are three main advantages. The first is size. Finding a commercial box of the size is easier said than done. Um, but making up a box like this, it just allows you to break out of that, those shackles of litter boxes being designed by humans um, and get a, get a nice big box where your cat has plenty of room to, to toilet and to dig and to bury. The second big advantage is that the sides of the box are transparent and there aren't many commercial trays that have this feature and this probably means that um, a lot of cats will feel less vulnerable, more comfortable because they'll be able to see out and um, survey the environment for potential threats. Another massive benefit of having transparent sides that helps prevent inappropriate toileting in your home relates to motivating you to do the right thing. One of the most off-putting things for a cat when they're looking to use a litter tray is pee or poo remaining in the tray. And a dirty tray means they're more likely to look for a cleaner substrate, which unfortunately could be your favorite rug or duvet on your bed. Transparent sides allow you to see when the litter box has been used, reminding you to scoop and keep the tray clean. If you scoop a couple of times a day, your cat will be far happier to use the tray. So the design elements of this box, which tick all the boxes, are uh, it's a great size for a cat, although they'd probably enjoy something even bigger. The transparent sides mean they feel more comfortable in the box, less vulnerable, and also mean that you'll probably scoop more and it will be cleaner. And finally, cherry on top, it's a very economical option for us. Just a note here about the lid. Us humans love to cover up our cat's litter trays, so I filmed it in this hooded configuration, but actually, if you want to increase the attractiveness of the tray even further, I'd recommend you go lid free. It will be even more open and spacious and your cats will thank you for it. So I hope you found this video helpful. As I mentioned earlier, I've got another video here delving into litter trays in more detail, explaining why most of the litter trays you see in the pet store are suboptimal for our cats. Check it out. I'd love to hear from you about litter boxes you've made and what your cats have thought of them. Who knows, maybe I'll make another video constructing your design, complete with wayward cuts and other uh, incompetence. <laughs> but if you found this video helpful and would like more videos relating to cat behavior and care, hit like and subscribe. It really does help. Okay, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching.